right, to kick things off, I've created a repo called Kickoff, and this is more or less a application template that we're gonna use to generate a new project in this regard, probably from the future on. So before in previous series, you saw me adding gems, installing things, configuring things, all that stuff gets taken place with this app template. So what's neat about the template is I'm just on GitHub, and I'll link to this, so don't worry if you don't have it handy. Um, when you run a Rails new, you can pass in a template and you can even pass in what type of database you want to use. And I've kind of just sourced this code and used what we've used before, maybe a couple new things. We just define these properties that are functions that get called in whatever sequ sequential order you want to. So I'm adding all the gems we typically use. You can set a gem group. You can set the application name and have it be default if you want, or it can even come back at you and tell you what you want it to be. So I can even type in what our app will be called, which is pretty cool. Since we use certain gems, you actually want to run generators to set those up. So I'm actually making that kind of automate. So in this regard, I'm doing simple form like we've been using, um, devise, of course. So I'm setting the device install, I'm configuring the environment variables to use localhost on 3000 in the development environment, I'm setting a root to home.index, and then generating the user model, which adds the name field automatically, which means I don't have to do that registrations controller thing that we've always done, which is awesome. I have an add home method in here. I think it was meant to be taken out, but more or less, it was supposed to create a controller for device to use, but instead you can actually copy pre-existing templates over and that's what's happening here. Um, I'm also removing a application style sheet.css file because I'm going to add a SAS file. Adding Sidekick. Sidekick is a cool background processing thing that you can use to do things in the background so you don't have to just kind of tax your app over and over. We'll get into some of that maybe later on. As always, I do guard and I prefer live reload when I'm working with CSS and stuff. I don't use it a lot in these series as you find because I've already done the CSS. So I'll probably just kind of copy and paste that like I have been doing. But then you see all those methods here that get called. So you can actually do, um, after the initial bundle install, you can do all of these commands, copy the templates, create the Rails environment, and then the, the migrate, and then initialize it with git so all that happens is one command using a template and it's pretty pretty killer so definitely check that out if you're interested in following along and kind of and you understand what's going on so far you'll see some files here that may may be of use but um i'm not sure if i'm going to use that one uh, but we we've got the stuff that gets copied over in the sense so anything you see in here that isn't the template file gets copied over minus the git based stuff uh, so like in the app, you'll see controllers and then the home controller that just gets copied over because we're going to use that for device. So you can extend this on your own, obviously make your own repo to do this. You can push, uh, what's it called? Pull requests to this one if you want. So feel free to do that. But anyway, we're going to use this to kick things off. So I'm going to start in, I already cloned this to my local, uh, and we have kickoff here so inside it is that stuff and you need to run the rails new inside this app inside this directory to to get it to work um, you can pass it i guess the actual like kickoff wherever your directory is so like template rb but i'm just gonna do it inside here so i'll do rails new and then i'll just do job board and then dash m and then template and then be sure to do dot rb there and we should be able to run our new rails app so here it's asking me what the name of the application is if you don't set anything it's just called kickoff by default i'll just do job board and this doesn't need to be any specific um syntax like underscores or anything so you can just call it what you will so if you if you follow along there it's kind of doing stuff we've done before you see devise all those like to-do items come along it did simple form at the beginning 
and this is all after it installed the gems. So it does all this stuff in the order you choose. And then we even copied over all the device views I tend to use because I always have to customize those. And I just decided to create um, a decent working example that are already in a, the app folder. So you see a device folder here. That may change as device changes, so it's probably not the best path to go, but for this stuff, it's working for me so far. So I'm gonna just kind of go with the flow. Can always update it, which is the beautiful thing. Uh, so everything should be set. Our app is actually in the kickoff folder though, so we wanna actually move it. And I'm just gonna open this in the finder and move this out to its own directory. And then we should be able to do CD out of this and go into job board. Uh, if I can spell, cool. And then we should be able to do a Rails server. I'm thinking address already in use because I think it, this one's up. Yeah, that's from the old one. Let's try that again. If I go back to localhost 3000, there's like Bulma straight up installed, kind of using the bare bones stuff, our configured app names in place. And then we just have the text and everything ready to go. Obviously if you extend this, you can move this stuff. It's just me putting it there for, hey, remember me, I did this kind of thing. But anyway, device is already set up and you can actually sign up and you already have the name field configured. So it's pretty sweet. Um, so from here, we'll actually kick things off and very first thing to do is install a few for more gems though since we have the out of the box we have the stuff we need but i want to install a few more that will be handy as we go let's open this in sublime 2 and then i'm gonna put it in its own window so this one will be job board the demo app is obviously demo job board so in our gem file we're gonna have kind of a cluster fuck going on because we added gems here there's more gems up here and there's there's this kind of it would be better if they were all just kind of more organized but it's you know get beggars can't be choosers i guess so i want to add a few more and one's going to be carrier wave which we've used in a previous series and this is just to have an avatar or logo for the job it's kind of a way to configure it and make it look pretty so let's do this real quick and generate oops here and then I want mini magic, which is part of carry wave. So I can never remember. Let's go to Ruby gems. There it is. Copy this here, paste it there. Then we want stripe makes things easier. And finally tricks, which is a pretty cool library for text editors. It's pretty lightweight too. Awesome. So we'll do another bundle install. Our first one was automatic since we used that template. It should go get that stuff. And then we can just do, we already have git initialize. So get status, get add, get commit, update gems. I guess I could be more descriptive there. I'm just trying to save some time. Um, so we could maybe do bundle update in case anything's out of date which happens. So next we need a, we already have our user model, but I do want to add a few things to it. And that's going to be uh, some card info that we'll get. So let's start with the user. We'll do rails, generate migration, add card info to users. Okay. That'll work. Whatever. I'll <laughs> I open it and do it that way. Uh, let's see, migrate, add card info to users, def change. Then we need to add quite a few columns. So add column. With that done, we can run, ugh, we can run rails db migrate because we already have our user model uh, that was kind of instantiated when we installed device with our template. So we go out to our database. We could check the schema and you could see all those things added now. 
Cool. All right, with that done, we can move on to adding one more parameter to the user's model, which is gonna make an admin. A uh, cool thing, easy thing, easiest way I would say to add an admin user to a user is just to have a like admin boolean property, which is like true or false if they're admin. So we can just generate another uh, migration. Add admin to users and we'll call it admin and then set it the boolean when boolean means true or false or one or zero so we can set that and just verify it's looking good users admin boolean and we'll do another rails db migrate there it is all right okay so if we want to kind of confirm that that was all good to go we can actually sign up at this point all right, so if I go to Rails console and we'll just create a local variable called user and set it to user.last and that's typically the last user that's created. So you'll see all this stuff on my account now. What I wanna do is set admin to true so we can hook into our user variable we set and do admin, so dot admin and then just do an equal sign and set it to true and do user.save to make sure it stays that way. So if we do user again, admin is set to true now. So that's just verifying that that did work. We did save the user to the database. Everything's good and peachy. Peachy, I don't, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so we've got user stuff set up and our admin user looks like a buttons missing some styling that shouldn't be there. I think I used a primary color in the first app. So let me update that real quick. That is on registrations edit, not warning. We'll do primary. Make sure this one's good. There we go, just that kind of turquoise color. Since I have installed, I'll just run guard as well. We did initialize our guard file, so we can just run bundle exec guard. Just leave this tab open and make sure your browser's hooked into live reload. I have this extension installed and you should see it say it's connected now. Awesome, so I'm just gonna leave this one open go back to this shell and then duplicate the tab. So I just have one that's ready to go. I'll increase the size so you guys can see it. Okay, so we have our users. We added the admin. We can check if an admin, uh, there's another like way to set an admin and I'll figure we'll figure that out as we go when we get into the views, just basically checking if a user is an admin. It's kind of similar if it's a current user. Let's create a job model so we'll do rails generate scaffold uh, job capitalized then we'll pass in quite a few things so title string description text uh, url Wait, I'm gonna double check. I think I did this in the demo app. I added things later. I figured why don't I add it all at once? So let's see what we got here. Description URL is a string. Uh, job type. This is gonna be lengthy, so sorry if it's annoying. String, and that'll be job type is gonna be like full time, part time, freelance stuff like that. Location, string. Job author string. We can add user ID, but I don't really want a form field for it, so I'll add it later. Same with avatar. Eh, I'll leave it off for now since we'll do it in the right order. So we need a remote OK property. That's going to be a Boolean. It's that checkbox I showed you in the beginning. Um, and then apply. URL is a string. So we'll start with that. 
and then we'll add a user ID so we can associate it to a user and then also an avatar when we add carrier wave, which I said we were just going to do, but we aren't at the moment. So that generates a ton of stuff. Um, I am going to delete the scaffold CSS. It's just kind of a, I should have ran it without that style sheets flag. And in the template, I had some base CSS that we used. Uh, we're probably going to add some more from our demo project. Why don't I just do that real quick? Here's our demo. Functions, application, I added this stuff. Copy and paste this in. You, so the tricks library, if you go on their docs, you can include a CSS file in this way. And Rails is smart enough to know that go find that. It looks weird, I know, but that's just kind of how it renders. Let's go to application. Let's do that. Um, we need to create, let's see, we've got functions, jobs, and stripe. So we need to create stripe. Jobs is going to have its own little bit of CSS. And you guys can copy this from the GitHub repo. It'll be linked below in the video in the description or uh, on the blog, of course. Stripe has its own classes based on the elements library we're going to use. OK, so that's CSS in place. We should be square. There'll be more application uh, or more JavaScripts we're going to use. Um, I'll get into that when we're working with Stripe. Uh, it looks like I need to run a migration because we added that user model or that job model. So I'll go ahead and do that. OK. So it's going to look pretty terrible. Uh, let's see. Check these paths tricks. OK, we need to restart our server. If you get that error, just try that. I think it should do the trick. There we go. OK, so we have that going. Um, what's left to do? We could do carrier wave real quick, I think, now that we have our model. We need to actually generate an uploader according to the docs here, so we can generate that. I'm gonna I call it, actually call it avatar just because. So I'll go back to this bash and generate an uploader. Then we'll go configure that one. So in app, uploaders, avatar uploader. There we wanna uncomment this one since I installed that gem. This lets us resize images. And I'll actually do a scale or not scale version of thumb. Just kind of keep that as is, but change these to 200. It's a square. I always kind of whitelist this stuff too. And that's it for that file. We do need an avatar column in our database though, so I'm going to add that. So Rails generate migration, add avatar to jobs. And then we could just do avatar string. And I already know that should be cool. So we can just do, oh, I typed that wrong. It's going to give an error. There we go. Now we need to mount the avatar. And that's going to happen in our job model. So if we go to our model job, we'll go and do mount uploader colon avatar. And then avatar uploader. Pay attention to the spelling there. Our relationships do need to be different as well. So a user is going to have many jobs. Here you see the device stuff already in place, which is cool. And then our user or job is going to belong to many uh, users or belong to users. Singular. OK, and then while I'm here, uh, we're going to set some constants, which are just going to be the job types we offer. And in this case, it's an array. I'm going to pass in full time, part time, contract, and freelance. That's it. So that's going to be what we basically append to a form in, the, in a minute. Once we get to that, uh, that will be what we see on the front end when they 
or creating a new job. So, so let's stop there. The very next video, I'll start to kind of work around to getting our application controller, not our application, our job controller and setup, and then also some of the views to get this thing looking like it should.